Okay, <clears throat> so where last we left our gang, you guys had beaten up the Big Mama Basilisk. Um, Korak, you were you had just finished pulling some teeth. Yes. Um, Rory, you or uh, rather uh, Tarask, you had been meditating for some time. And Dane was in the house, flipping through a book, continuing to rest, and so on and so forth. Um, if I didn't say it before, then I'll say now that Rory, I mean, uh, Tarask and Dane, you guys can roll, if you choose to, that you want to right now, you can roll your endurance dice pool and recover that many hit points. Um, and that will count as your hour-long uh, rest for the day. Uh, you won't be able to do that again until after a full rest. Uh, however, Korak, you won't be able to do that because you've been working. So, the... At the end of the last session, um, yep, you were resting in, in the living room, Dane, and Tarask, you had finished meditating, and all of a sudden, your staff started to glow and you basically told yes, everybody hey we got company so that's where we'll start that's where we begin your staff begins to glow okay <clears throat> as i said before guys we are not alone What do you mean? Who? What does that mean? And, uh, my um, my staff is imbued with a special ability. I am able to is able to tell me if we have um, any spirit creatures nearby, and by nearby I say within about a hundred feet of us. Are are you in the house or did you come out? Yes, I am. I am in the house at this point. Okay. Yeah. So Tarask, I think, would be the only one who's okay hearing this. I think you you hadn't come in yet. No. Well, are you familiar with these things? Are they things that you know how to deal with? Or should we call in Korak? I, um, okay, out of, out of character, I'm not sure, in character, uh, what would I need to roll in this case? This would be, I guess, logic with religion. What are you trying to determine? If I know what these, if I know what exactly we're running into. Uh, that, you wouldn't know exactly. All you know is exactly what you've said, is that it's some type of spirit is within 100 feet of you. Okay. So, that's all I can tell you is if some kind of spirit creature is with 100, within 100 feet of us, um, it doesn't tell me exactly what I have. We should go, we should go call Korak in. Let him know. And then I would go over to the door and, and, and maybe Korak would already be on his way in. I would just open it and just be like, oh, okay. Uh, we have some, we have some company. You guys see me immediately take a defensive posture. Yes, it, it suddenly dawns upon... Uh, well, first I'll let uh, Korak, are you still outside? You coming in? Where's he at? Well, I mean, I had cleaned up and was probably... I After I cleaned up, I would have headed into the house where everyone else is to, to look for some food. Yes, yes. Um, and... Uh, it dawns upon all of you that none of you know where Tobias is. Uh, Dane, you have a you know that he had been out, kind of in the he came in the back door, and he came down the hallway, and you heard him shuffle by, but um, you never went up to kind of investigate what he was doing, and he's been back there for quite a while. Okay, um, I start heading in the direction of where I last saw him. 
or where I last saw him move. Yeah, so you go through uh, an entranceway to this to a hallway. So, kind of, you, if you you came in the entrance of the house, right? And right now the 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 kitchen would be to your left. The living room would be to your center and right. And then, in straight in front of you, uh, would be the entrance to the hallway, which goes left to right. Uh, the the wall to the kitchen there on the left is smashed out or smashed in rather. Uh, and you begin to make your way through the opening to go into the hallway, and, and when you look down into the hallway, you see the door that Tarask saw over to the left, uh, down a little bit ways. That door is open, and uh, that okay. appears to be all that you can see. Okay. Um, had I seen this door closed previously? Or was the, was I ever in this area? Uh, no, you you haven't been back in here yet. Only uh, Tarask has. Okay. Okay. Um, I called a Tarask. Ask him to come come towards me. Um, I ask him if the I point out I point to the door in question. I said, um, has that door been open since we've been here? I'm uh, pretty sure I closed it when I left it. It's just a room full of jars. It's nothing special. <clears throat> Is that where he would have gone after getting his eye that he so desperately needed or wanted? You think I know what a crazy little gnome would do? I don't know. I guess he's got a room full of jars. I suppose he intends to use them for something. I, since I've not seen this room, I'm going to walk in. I'm going to walk in, but cautiously. Yeah, uh, as you make your way down the hallway a little bit, make a perception check for me. Okay. Let's see perception. I'll bring up the rear. Okay, you can make one as well then. Perception is intuition, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Mark Rose, 12. Okay. 10 for me. <clears throat> oh, I've got a ruler right here. Um, Korak, you notice down near the end of the hallway... Um, so this hallway has the door that's to, to your left, and you guys are kind of approaching it, and... While Dane kind of takes a quick glance around, his focus is on that open door that open door that goes into the other room. You take a, a slightly longer look down the hallway because it kind of strikes you as odd that the rest of the hallway has no other doors, but there's still a, a, hallway. a hallway, correct? And so um, that perks your interest, and indeed you find a sliver uh, of a of what would appear to be a hidden door at the very end of the hallway. And Dane, as you round the corner into this room, it appears to be completely empty. There's shelves, uh, but there's no jars. So either Tarask was Josh and you. Quick question. Would, um, would possible secret, would looking for a possible secret door require divination? Um, Again, the the divination is a magic skill, so it would require the casting of a spell. Uh, so, the let me pull up the enhancements. What's your um, actual divination skill? Uh, it's just divination one point. Okay. So, yeah, no divination won't be able to help you out here. Okay, no problem. But yeah, the room is empty. Okay, I'll um, tap um, Dane on the shoulder and sort of point down the hallway. Mm -hmm. And I guess I, I will whisper that um, there's a secret door down there. Okay. Um, I'll head towards that door, <clears throat> kind of having him guide me. So I think... Um... <clears throat> Tarash would be coming up and he'd see that there's these no jars in this room and just be like, what is going on here? 
and then just kind of fall in line with these guys and go to this secret door. Yeah, and that would kind of strike you too because he's small, he's slow because of his peg leg, and there were a lot of jars there. So you're stuck there thinking like, how the heck did he move all these? I mean, we haven't been gone that long. Yeah, so, I'm imagining like, because uh, when you said it before, I visualized like basically an entire room where every tabletop was covered in jars. Essentially, yeah. There were quite a few jars there. Um, I don't know, maybe 40 to 50 jars. Um, so so you guys make your way to the to that hidden door. I mean, it makes sense to head that. I mean, so I think we see right now. Yeah, as you... Oh, go ahead. I would like to check the door for any type of trap. (coughs) Okay. I'm assuming that's a just a straight-up perception check. Yeah. Yeah, do you have anything you think might be of use? Um, I mean, is it, is it like, really dark in here? I mean, well, I have dark sight, so that... Uh, and no, it's not, it's not really that dark. It's... This part of the hallway isn't lit directly, but there's enough light coming from the other part of the hallway uh, that, you know, there's some sconces that are lit. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't really have any um, skill that would help me out with this. I guess the journey probably wouldn't help either. And another 12. Okay. You pretty, you're pretty certain that... There is no trap on this door. You're almost positive that there's no trap on the door. Um, and in fact, as you guys get a little closer, Dane, your staff glows um, brighter and brighter the closer to this door that you get. Okay. Uh, and that indeed Whatever is spirit. lighting up the hallway as well. Wherever spirit is here, we're getting closer to it. Yes, and as you check the tra- uh, check the door for traps, make another perception check. Just uh, just Korak, so you're kind of like right up next to the door, checking it out. Only eight that time. Okay, yeah, you hear something coming through the door, but it's ju- all, it's very muffled, and you can't quite make out what it is. You can tell it's um, Tobias talking, and he sounds distressed. You can't tell what he's saying though. Okay. So I'll basically so you say quietly. To, Tobias is in there. Seems to be distressed. There's no. Do I see any like um, glasses or a vase or anything like that around? Um. Sure. There was a uh, a few jars in that room that were empty, just kind of left rolling around on the floor in there. Okay. I think uh, Teresh just kind of wants to stand up and jog back and grab one. And try to put his ear up to the, the bottom of it and try to get a better listen to what's going on on the other side. Can I use a survival uh, if I do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's survival. Well, survival... If you were checking for traps, I'd say survival might apply. Uh, but in this case, since you're using like an implement, I'll give you a plus one d six to your uh, perception check. Cool. Uh, perception check. Intuition. All right. All right. Uh, nine, ten. Oh, and plus one d six. Fourteen. Yes. With this glass jar, you're able to. Um, you press the. F- well, how would that work exactly? If it's a closed bottom glass jar, how would you? Uh, that's the way, I don't know, that's the way I always was shown it. You take a glass and you flip it upside down, you put the open side up to the door and you put your ear on the back side and you can hear a little bit better what's going on on the other side. So it just is... make sure that the top is off the jar. <laughs> it, enhances, it enhances the vibrations. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you can hear Tobias in there and he uh, he's talking to somebody and he's he sounds very distressed and he's you catch a, a few words and what you hear him say is um now we had a deal that's about all you can catch and the rest turns to to mumbling so i would kind of let the jar drop and just be like 
We're in the middle of a some sort of arrangement. We're not. This isn't what it seems like. We're caught in the middle of something bigger here. What do you guys want to do? Um, I'm going to see using my staff because I'm. I don't know if there's a trap here or not. And I'm. I'm still a little leery of it. <clears throat> I'm going to use the. Door, I'm going to use my staff and gently and slowly try to crack open the door a little bit more. See if we can hear more of what's going on. I don't want to barge in here. Not yet. They, there's nothing that leads me to believe that we need to just go crashing on in. So when you push on the door, you notice that it's not a door that opens in or out. It's a door that slides. Okay. So I'll change my approach. <laughs> yeah, so you, you'll slide it open just a little bit. And Cornick is um, readying his spear. He's, okay. he's ready to just barge in and you know, take action. So. Okay, yeah, as you crack the door open a little bit, um, some of the light, even though your staff is bright, some of the light from that room floods into this hallway. Um, and you can see that uh, from your vantage point, you can see Tobias standing in the middle of the room. You can see um, a whole bunch of jars that must be the jars that Tarask was talking about on the left side of him. And a few large barrels, uh, wooden barrels, over to the right of him uh, that they appear to be sealed, uh, presumably filled with something. There's drippings down the side of them. Uh, and yes, as you open the door, uh, basically their conversation becomes, uh, entirely audible and you hear Tobias say, um, I don't have to let you take this stuff. I could, I could destroy it all right now. You, you take me with you. That was the deal. That was the, and then I need to roll a perception check for him. Can I, can I discern, can I make out who he is talking to or what? Um, you, you would surmise that it is a spirit uh, that he's talking to because you, there's basically a light emanating from there and no body. Okay. All right. He does not hear you open the door. Uh, he is unaware of your presence. Uh, however, uh, as he's saying that, you all, you don't need to make a perception check to hear that where back coming from behind you where the kitchen is and where that broken down wall is, you guys hear the, tw the twi well, that's not what you hear. You don't hear dogs barking, but you do hear um, the sound of metal screeching on metal. So that's coming back the way we just came? Yes, that would appear to be coming from that kitchen area where the wall had been knocked out. So does that draw his attention, or does he not hear that either? Uh, he doesn't appear to be aware of that. Okay. <laughs> so which problem do you guys want to solve first? Whatever that is behind us or whatever this is in front of us? What's in front of us does not seem to pose an immediate threat, at least not yet. But it's not a metal on metal, does not appeal to me. Do you want me to go check it out? Obviously, we're whispering. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll go. With yeah, you. go. Sorry. Hey, let's split up the party. <laughs> I thought, I'm going. Sorry. I'm going wherever they end up going. I'm going to. I'm going to be stepping back, but I'm going to kind of position myself where I am literally in between the two points of interest. So whichever one has something immediate happen, I will be able to move quickly towards that direction. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. So either I'm going to be flying in solo towards the spirit, towards the spirit. When we flying in 
to join my, my. Yeah. So Korak, uh, as you go, as you, uh, make your way back out to where that sound is coming from, uh, you look outside of the kitchen there where the wall is torn down and you see a huge chunk of that metal pen that was there is now not there. It appears to have sprouted legs and walked off or something. Okay. Um, does it look like it? I mean, from where I am, can I see if it was dragged away or? Um, yeah, gone? you uh, you poke your head out a little bit um, and you can see that it basically looks like it either magically vanished or has been levitated up and away. And if you uh, make a perception test for me and see, uh, you notice some, you hear kind of the rustling of some leaves and your eyes are drawn that way. Let's see if you see. I, I got a 10. A ten, a ten is enough to to catch just the very very tail end of a of a glinting piece of metal that appears to be traveling through the woods behind the house, almost as though the metal is making its way around the house. Okay. And it would be going back around the back side of the house, not the front side of the house where you guys came in, but around the back side of the house. Um, kind of where you guys are located, but on the outside. Okay. Um, and that was a large piece of metal, correct? Yes. So whatever would be moving it must be pretty powerful. You would assume so. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty hefty piece of metal. Okay. Um, I will, uh, Rory, or, or uh, sorry. Um, uh, Tarask. Yeah, I, I think I should I, be nearby you. Okay. So I'm going to let you know what I saw. What do you think we should do? So I would uh, just kind of, so a big piece of metal. Uh, I don't know who's, who's, who's carrying the big piece of metal. When you say that, you've uh, Dane, you can feel heat emanate from the room that Tobias is in, uh, and there's an intensity coming from that room that wasn't there before. What is my staff doing? Um, it's still glowing, just as bright as it okay. was before. So, okay, so not like there's been more. <laughs> um, no, it's pretty much on full, oh full lumen. Um, crap. Um, and then you hear you all hear Tobias screaming inside the room, and he you hear him say, This is unacceptable. No, the deal's off. The deal's off. And you hear the twisting and warping of metal coming from the outside. At that point. I head straight for the door. The sliding door? Okay. I, I'll follow. I mean, do we all hear it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's not a big house. Well, me and you should be outside already, right? Oh, uh, yeah, well, you guys have kind of poked your head outside the wall, but, I mean, it can't be more than 30 feet away from the hallway and, and the door. In the hallway. Oh, okay, so we just it, run back. To yeah, it's a it's a small house, and and yeah, you guys hear that? You run back and you see Dane uh, slide open the door completely, and when he does that, uh, you you see Tobias whip around and and look at you with this kind of confusion and anger on his face, and then all at once that large piece of metal crashes through the wall behind him, and. Uh, a sharp piece of metal just runs right through his chest 
and lifts him up off the ground. And he, uh, and he looks down, and, and he's got this big piece of metal with blood dripping down on him. Uh, and he's, he says, oh, You bitch! And then it, it rips out of him, and he falls to the ground. And then all of the jars and the barrels um, vanish. And uh, the your staff slowly begins to... Um, dim a little bit and mm-hmm. Tobias you see him kind of <clears throat> clutch his chest and everything he's like that little bitch whore I knew I shouldn't have your, gla- your staff lights up really quickly again and you see one last piece of metal just get jammed into his, the back of his neck and it, it just completely finishes him off and then um says so he decapitates him uh pretty much yeah it it apparently didn't like uh him calling it names and you can feel its presence staring into you staring at you uh okay. and you can see kind of this wispy uh grayish white ethereal smoke in front of you and it almost tries to form itself into this face, but it seems to, it doesn't struggle to do it, but it, it's hard to form a face from, from smoke. And it gets very close to your face. Okay. Uh, and it has this streaming black hair, or at least your best guess would be that it's black. It seems to be darker colored than the rest of the face. And the face is elven and uh, it's a woman. And it it just makes eye contact with you, Dane. And then it's Why, it, Rick, can I make out this face? You could make a logic history test if you want. Logic history, so that's gonna be for me let's see, I've got one in history, so I'll be forty six. And then be- Korak and and uh Taras, you guys are there too. It's clear as day. Uh, you see this ethereal face in front of you. You guys could too try to make logic history checks to identify it. 13 for me. Okay. Eight for correct. Huh? Yeah. And a seven for Tarask. I'm like, do you see <laughs> something there? Or <laughs> no, nothing. So Dane, you're the closest. You obviously get the the best look at it. The face looks almost too familiar. Um, but before you make the connection, uh, it poofs out into white smoke again and it will send pieces of metal towards all three of you so uh, I need to know everybody's ranged melee defense oh uh, did you get my my message I spent three points on a skill point in dodge those are points well spent, but no, I, I didn't get your message. Okay, I don't um, even remember where I sent it. So, but but I, um, I don't need to know your range defense, but I'm going to tell you what my attack roll is here for these pieces of metal that come flying through the wall towards you. Uh, it's a 5, 10, 11, 13, oh, yeah. 17, 19, so. and 22. Wow. You even hit me. Uh, 22 total? Yeah, that's definitely a hit. Okay. And it will... Uh, so if it hits all of you, then Dane, your piece of metal hits you for 8 points of piercing damage. Actually, uh, sorry, uh, 10. 10 points of piercing damage, sorry. Oh, ouch. Are there were all those points I healed. Um, and then next would be Tarask. It comes towards you for 
seven points of, or sorry, nine points of piercing damage. And, and then Korak, you are, oh my word. Oh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Oh, you can't see it. It's three sixes. So 18, 20 points of piercing damage on Korak. Ouch. I'm glad that was you and not me. And I think I'm going to be spending some points on dodge and acrobatics very soon. Now, um, Korak, you can use luck dice at a one for one um, rate. I, I spent my luck dice in the fight. Ah. So, um, I mean, I take 15 of that. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm bloodied. <laughs> okay, but oh, you're not dead. You're not down. Oh, no. All right, another um, piece of metal. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling that this nut then stops, yeah. but uh, it actually just kicked in my my um, my glory. That's uh, right. <laughs> yep, yep. So uh, once once that happens, uh, the smoke vanishes, um, and with it all of the the jars and the barrels that were there everything goes completely silent and basically korak you got uh jammed with this piece of metal and it came across your side and just tore open a big gash in your side um dane the piece of metal that came towards you kind of chipped on your shoulder and uh it it was a blunt piece and it knocked you back a little bit and tore open some flesh and then Tarask, yours was um, kind of a glancing blow on your arm and it tore open a gash on your arm. And then all goes silent. That wasn't very pleasant. What the hell's going on here? So pretty much we've got an empty room if we want to just get down to the brass tacks of it, right? I couldn't come up with anything else this week. I'm sorry. Here's a room. Go play. <laughs> I, um, I'm going to go up to Tobias. Obviously, he is dead. I'm going to see if he has any sort of note or anything on him that might indicate who the hell that was. Yeah, you, uh, you pat his body down and... Among some other things, you find he has... Probably the most interesting thing on him is this necklace that he has. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, this necklace is a... It's made from, from twine. And when you look at it, it's this dark black obsidian type crystal uh, with that same type of wispy looking fog encased inside of it. Um, it clearly has some magical uh, properties to it. Um, that's probably the most interesting thing you find. So mark that down. You've got a, a strange black magical necklace um, crystal necklace. Um, you also find he's got his, his peg leg, if you want to take that. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm not rocket. I don't need it. Um, although, how badass would that be if it were a little bit longer, if that was the, the staff part to your spear? Oh. <laughs> 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 um, <clears throat> but unfortunately, no, it's not, it's not quite long enough. Uh, uh, you don't find any notes or anything of that nature on him. <clears throat> um, I will toss the necklace to Dane because for me it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and the only thing I'm able to, the only thing I've got, my exploit that uh, came with my... Um, with my inquisitor was uh was since magic and uh what's that exploit do uh it just allows me to step out magic within 60 feet okay yeah this that's pretty much <laughs> that's magic 
<laughs> yeah, so that's about all I can do until I can get something like um, I decide to do something like. I thought there was one. There was one I thought where I could actually identify what uh, point that with one of my um, careers that I could have taken that allowed me to take identify. Yes, lore master. So. If I take another rank of more master, I could take uh, identify, and I'd be able to identify what it is. But I don't have actually. I do have identify. My mistake. Oh, you do. So I do have identify. Um, identify. I can automatically identify a magical item, its name, and its properties. Okay, fantastic. <clears throat> um. So yes, you take a look at this necklace, and you begin looking it over. And it, it all of a sudden kind of dawns on you what this is. And while it doesn't have a, a proper name, like, uh, you know, something of the something, it is a particular type of crystal that you've read about before. And basically, it's a, uh, the crystal it's made out of is some type of, uh, of rare earth uh or and uh it's capable of storing a large amount of magical power that can uh you can kind of pre-charge it with a spell so you can cast spells into the crystal and those spells will remain in the crystal until uh evoked and in order to evoke the spell you have to know the spell you don't have to be able to cast it, but you have to know the spell. You have to know how to how to cast the spell. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be able to cast it, and uh, and and that that's all that's required. So if if the person put like a a command word on it, like abracadabra or something like that, then uh, they would be able to invoke the magic of the crystal. <clears throat> Uh, this one, um, since uh, you have that exploit, this one you can tell is filled with a type of magic that allows basically levitation of an area of effect. Okay, allows for levitation as an area effect spell. Yes. I think we figured out how I moved all this stuff. Yes. This and I kind of explain what this does. I will go ahead um, if there's no objection from the rest of the party. I will go ahead and wear it. Um, and um, so there's no way I know the there's no way that I can know the the command word. Yeah, you're not sure of, of how you I would. That. No, See, no, no, you you're I, unsure I, of how I, to activate I, the magic in it. <clears throat> Is it written on the back of the? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I'm a little further. You're like, mm. Does it on the back? On the back, does it say alley hoop? <laughs> <laughs> um, alas, no. There's nothing written on it. <clears throat> Did you try turning it off and turning it back on again? <laughs> It's possible. <laughs> Banging it on the desk, maybe. Um, just as a as a general, I guess a general knowledge career career knowledge thing, is this something that if I went to a more experienced, um, if I were able to go to a more experienced lore master or uh, or an experienced mage or an experienced someone of some, is there somebody that I would be able to take this to? that would be able to discern what the command word is. Yes. Uh, all yes. you would need to do is find somebody who is capable of casting the spell that's stored within it. And then uh, once they attempt to do that, either it will work or it will fail. And if it fails, then the way to activate it will be made known to them. Uh, either a command word will come to them through the crystal or, or something. So basically, um, it, it's kind of as a fail safe. Like, I want to cast a spell on this. and uh, So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. 
a Tarask at this point is like up against the wall, like looking up, trying to look around, figuring out if he's going to get shanked with another <laughs> random spike of metal. Just being perceptive in case that brings on any rolls. Um, the roof falls in on your head and you die. Oh, no. <laughs> just, just, just kidding. Oh, gee. Wait, wait, wait a minute. TPK three games in. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, in character, um, I look at I have a feeling that we're all just a little bit worse for wear right now. I would suggest that we, as much as I would like to make it back to the caravan, I think we need to. I think we need to make base here, lick our wounds, so to speak, and um, head back out in the morning back to the caravan and hope that they are there. Look, I could use the sleep, but seriously, something just flew in here and stabbed us. What was that? Is it going to happen again? I, I don't think so. I think whatever business was made between Tobias and that. Don't say it. I, you see, you see this look on my face as I say thing. Something in the back of my mind is trying to process more out of what I just saw. So there's so something you see you you quote unquote hear gears turning as I make this statement. Say whatever that thing is. Um, <laughs> I think it made its business known. I don't think we have to worry about it anymore, at least not tonight. Um, I'm more than willing to give Tobias a, a proper burial to the dead. And we make use of his home and then return to the caravan in the morning. Will the caravan have stayed there? <laughs> hmm. I suppose that's the type of thing you only find out when you get there. Well, in character, my character would probably know whether or not it would. So I believe I did explain that we would be back soon. Um, so I believe they will stay and wait for us. Well, they'll stay and wait for me at least since... I was part of the I was part of the caravan. Stay and wait for the basilisks to eat them. You mean? <laughs> Remember this. I'm this hoping this little gnome I'm guy. I had a whole herd of them, or gaggle, or whatever <laughs> you call a group of basilisks. <laughs> what do you call a group of lizards? <laughs> I'm not. I'm sure there's a word for it, <laughs> <laughs> but Taras doesn't know it, despite his survival skill. Uh, no. You, why don't you make a uh, logic, uh, logic survival check and see if you know what the name of a group of lizards is. Uh. Meanwhile, three. <laughs> <laughs> so he's there gonna go with three. gaggle. Yeah, three. Logic is two d six. I rolled a two and a one. Oh jeez. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, yeah, you're like. Oh, I didn't add my. Oh, sorry, I didn't add my survival. You better add it. Which is a whole another five. So that's an eight. Okay. Um. <laughs> just because I wanted it to work. Uh, it's called a lounge. <laughs> there it is. A yes. lounge. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, now I'm just thinking of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. The lounge of living people. Thinking, why am I thinking of Leaf of Suit Larry? But... Now that's there. So okay. as that as that comes to your mind, actually, uh, you guys hear footsteps coming uh, from the other room. You guys are still currently in the hallway, and you can hear footsteps coming from 
where you came from. Okay. I drop uh, my spear into fighting position. Yeah, in this close range, Tarask would pull out a short sword. I'm. I will approach the door. I'm using my steps for, because I need the reach. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys are all at the ready, and you're ready to pounce, and then as you inch your head around the corner a little bit, you don't see anything at first, and then a face pops out in front of you, uh, and it's one of the guys from the caravan, and he, he's scared, and he's shaking, and he says, um, I'm, uh, I'm sorry we left the caravan, um, and he's looking around, and he's like, is, is, is everything okay here? Tarask is, is happy. He's like right there next to the guy, and he's like, "This is great. You came to us. This is this is awesome. Uh, this is tremendous." Dane, I, an excellent crew. I step forward since I was in the leadership position. I say, "We are all pretty hurt, but we're, for all intents and purposes, okay." Um, where is is the where is the rest of the caravan? Uh, and when he sees you, he visibly kind of <sighs> takes a sigh of relief, and he's like, because uh, he he's been waiting for a while, and seeing you gives him that sense of authority. He's not used to taking charge and barreling off on his own. So he says, "Ah, master, uh, we currently." And he's like, "If I'm going to be frank with you, the guys are are shitting bricks in the caravan right now." Uh, they're trying to get some sleep, but after what they saw, they were down to about two, two caravan, two, uh, wagons and four horses. And yeah, there's five of us. Um, but we don't uh, want to be in here in the swamp anymore that I really don't think we're going to make it the night out there. Okay. I completely understand. Um, this is going to be more in character knowledge. Did we, or do we have, were there, were there any healers that survived the, the initial onslaughts? Uh, he thinks for a second and he says, uh, well, sir, we're, uh, most of us have basic training in, in first aid, but, uh, and he thinks, he says, we do have some food and uh, and a few medical supplies left in the wagons that have survived. Basically, what was kind of loaded up underneath each caravan as provisions and basic medical uh, supplies for everyday needs of scrapes and cuts and what have you. Are, are you still where you were when we left you? He says, you bring the yes. To us? Yes, yes, we, we are still where where you left us. Okay. In that case, I'm... At my party, looking at the party, I suggest we head off there. We have supplies there. We can take what... We can take what time we need to get bandaged up, and then let's get the hell out of Dodge. I'm like him. I don't want to be here any longer. Again, not said with a sense of fear. More said with, again, a sense of in the back... That that set the sound that someone the sound of someone's voice they make when in the back of their mind there's still something there's something going on back here that they're still trying to figure out. Um, aside, I need to I need to get a let's see. Uh, maybe, you're apparently met with blank stares, and that. <laughs> I 
I'm not sure if we lost you, Tony, but uh, your camera went off. Oh, Ro okay, Rory had stepped away. So uh, Rory basically, um, I don't know where, where Tony's at at the moment, but uh, uh, Dane is suggesting you all go back to the caravan and patch up and head out. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was actually there for that part. I had a, a diaper change uh, emergency. Um, I heard that uh, he's here and he has, um, yeah, I believe you said, what was it, uh, two two carts here and four horses? There, there are two of the remaining caravan that we left behind. They're still there, but what they were able to, what they were able to cobble together essentially turned into from five to eight carts and equivalent horses. It's now down to two carts, four horses. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. But there, but there are provisions there to help us with our med, to help us deal with our medical needs to where we should be able to, I don't know if we'll get full hit points back, but we'll definitely get. Yeah. Tarask would kind of look at himself and he'd be bleeding the one bruise. Yeah. He'd have a nice size bruise from that piece of metal that hit him and have some blood there. He still has some cuts, even though they had healed a bit uh, from the basilisk um, encounter. So he would uh, kind of shake his head and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could use a rest before we do anything else. Yeah, uh, Tony said that his computer, uh, yeah, so. yeah, borked out on him, so he'll be right back. Um, he must have been on, probably was on his laptop, and that's probably why. I think one of the previous times we played, he was on his laptop and kind of low on juice. <laughs> yes, so um, a s uh, the manservant, we'll call him, is elated that he's found you guys and and you guys are are getting going um and as far as korak i'm going to assume he's going to be okay with uh going along um why don't before you guys leave you guys make some perception checks for me uh as you kind of scour the the house for anything useful okay fourteen and we'll be right back okay that's a seventeen ooh fantastic I'm just waiting for uh, the other guys. Yeah, this guy is, he doesn't like to cooperate on Friday nights. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> okay, if I got another meth, I want to well, get me a drink real quick. Yeah, go ahead. I suppose we'll just kind of take this opportunity to uh, take a short five minutes. Okay, cool. I'll go grab a can of soda. Thank you. 
Hey, there you are. Okay, um, but your audio... <laughs> your audio sounds like a chipmunk at the moment. Like it did before. Okay, is that better? Ah, yes, ah. there we go. Um, so basically the, the other guy, it took a quick five minutes, uh, but Dane is basically talking to this manservant and, uh, has come to the conclusion that it might be in all of your best interests to, uh, go back to the caravan and patch up there and just start getting the heck out of Dodge. And, uh, Tarask seems to be on board with this. So in the caravan's heading back to Nala correct um that much is uncertain at this point uh all their goal seems to be to just get out of the swamp because okay. much of the caravan that was still remaining is no longer remaining you're down to two covered wagons and four horses okay um and while we wait for rory to get back i had these two guys roll perception checks on their way out to see if they pick up any anything of value around the house before you guys leave. I'll go ahead and have you do that as well. Okay. And that is um, 16. Oh, nice. can, I, can, I invoke, can I invoke my uh, young? Make it exploding? Uh, yes. Okay, so I, had, I rolled two sixes. Say. Um, young anymore, am I? 22, 24. One more six. 26 total. Dang. Okay, so what I want you to do... Um, well, we'll wait till Rory gets back. Uh, and that way... It'll make easier editing for me when it comes to video time. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. My, um, I got the blue screen of death. Ah, yes. And uh, it actually told me that it had a memory issue and was shutting down. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. Let me guess, you're running Windows 8, aren't you? Um, 10. It seems to be a common thread. I, I've never had that happen before. Okay, Rory's back. So, um, you guys all rolled very nicely for searching around the house. What I want... Um, so, Tarask and Dane, I want you each to, if you can... If you're capable of rolling a percentile die for me, um, let me know what the result of that. And since... Yours was so high, um, Korak. I want you to roll it three times, and, okay. uh, and we'll get. To, we'll, I want to do one at a time. So, Rory, let me know first what you get on a percentile die. I got a thirty-one. Thirty-one. You find a little beach eye patch uh, in in a drawer that you rooted through. So you find this cute little eye patch. It's, probably, uh, it probably went with his peg leg. <laughs> his cos <laughs> his cosplay. You say it was cosplay. <laughs> it's canon. It's his cosplay outfit. <laughs> I rolled a sixty-two. Okay, you find a batter. Uh, you find some battered walnut bookends that appear to be intact and might be worth a little bit of money. Uh, they seem to be rather ornate and of small folk origin and handcrafting. Battered walnut. Bookends. And then... Probably weighs like less than a pound. Yeah, I, I don't even bother marking the weight down. Um, and then... Korak. Okay, so you said three times. So uh, first was 78. Okay, that one is a. You find a little charcoal blanket with uh, woven into it are brown centaurs. This appears to be very valuable, made of very nice material. 
Uh, so you definitely, you pick that up and you snatch hold of that. You've seen this type of thing in Nala go for, for a lot of money. Okay. The amazing thing is, is I, I have the, a thing for centaurs. Um, 75. 75. Um, you find a pristine in the fridge, a uh, small little case of this world's equivalent of sardines. Okay. And three. Um, for some reason or another, uh, around a few of the same other drawers that uh, Tarask found the eye patch, you find a beautiful copper hairbrush that nice. might fetch some coin in a market. Okay. Not as much as my eye patch. <laughs> yeah, do you, do you put it on? How does it look? <laughs> Dashing. Um, I can't using aim. my <laughs> using my um set um using the uh, using the OLD equivalent of taking a twenty using my sense magic magical items in this in the house um I, apart from the necklace that uh whoever i don't know who has the necklace now but that's the only thing that you can sense yeah that's the okay. only magic that you can sense in the house all righty <clears throat> okay um you guys have no problem making your way back to the caravan and indeed when you get there uh, you're able to break out what remaining supplies you have left and patch up some wounds. Um, Korak, you can take this moment uh, to roll your endurance dice pool and add that back to your health. And th the rest of you um, can roll 1d6 and add that back to your health for um, patching up and eating and getting a little bit of rest. Get my five back. Yay. <laughs> On the mechanics of this game, taking a full night's sleep, what does that do in terms of uh, hit point recovery? Um, basically, it... Um, hold on. It allows you to... Uh, roll your endurance dice pool again okay for healing yeah i'm trying to f find that now but i'm i'm pr almost positive that's and your luck dice replenish every day right yep you can take 5 minutes once a day to replenish your luck dice pool definitely take that now after getting after doing the 1d6 for an uh, healing. <laughs> yep. So it's basically just once per day you can um, roll your endurance health pool or your endurance dice pool and regain that many hit points. Uh, so it's not like you just get back to full hit points when you take a rest that's a bit grittier than that right. it's you can rest up and then choose when to spend uh your basically roll your endurance dice pool of course there are other okay. sources of healing and what have you uh but essentially you have one opportunity per day to kind of patch yourself up and that's that's it you can only take so much. You can only heal yourself up so much from physical damage, uh, and that's determined okay. by how healthy you are. Um, yeah, Taras can be looking at his cuts and just be like, "Stupid gnome, supposed to give us a healing potion. Only thing we didn't get." Yeah, you're not sure those herbs would have worked anyway. And they smelled really rancid, and you're not you're not sure he had a hundred percent idea of what he was doing anyway, with that. 
No, I'm convinced he had almost zero idea what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, you guys make your way back to the caravan. Uh, you're able to kind of do that. And uh, are, do you want to take off out of the out of the swamp before you rest? Or do you want to try to rest here in the swamp? Because you've spent about an hour kind of taking stock of your supplies. and If we were chatting about it, I would be... Uh, I would remind Dane that the men wanted to get out of here and uh, looking around, you don't have much left anyway. We should, we probably should get, get going. I agree completely. Um, also, um, yeah, I'm going to take, while we did this whole taking inventory, I took inventory of the state of party as in the NPC um, and see how well they are. Look, we the three of us have been just went through hell. It would be appreciated if rest while we start journeying off. Once we get our rest, we'll be more than happy to want to take position to where we can be where we can do well enough defending this caravan if we're not full if we're not if we're not healed um yeah the uh they they appear to be uh in fairly good health and good spirits now that you guys are back and um you kind of cut in and out uh while you were talking there i don't know if he if he did to anyone else but what i gathered was that you are trying to surmise from them if they're okay with not stopping, basically, like taking shifts in driving. And but and then once we're at a point where we can recover, we will take our we will take position to where we're able to where we're able to assist effectively. Okay, so are you, is your intention to sleep while you guys drive out of the swamp? Um, if that, if that's what everybody else needs, I know that's what I personally need. Oh, I think, uh, Tarrasque would I must, eat I must have hit points. Yeah, I mean, I think Tarrasque would go out quickly and easily. He's used to sleeping in weird, you know, at places he sleeps outdoors next to trees. So he would just fall asleep as soon as he felt he could. Now, doesn't he meditate? That's right. He would just fall into his meditation. <laughs> yeah, so you would be a bit more perceptive um, while you were resting than the others. So, um, yeah, if you're stepping forward, then you would, I don't know if you would offer that knowledge up, say, guys, listen, I'm an elf. I don't need to sleep. Yeah. I can meditate and be aware, at least mostly aware of my surroundings while you guys can sleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would. Ex I would explain that to them. And then I would kind of sit myself back against the back of it and kind of lower my eyelids, not really closed, um, and just kind of sit there in that easy breathing state. Yeah. Korak will uh, like look down and examine his new uh, wound, hoping for a new scar as he drifts <laughs> off to sleep. This is what, that's what orcs dream of. Um, okay, the horses rear up and you guys begin to make your way out of the swamp in this covered wagon. Um, of course, there's two covered wagons. Are you all in one or are you separated in the in two in both of them? Basically, you can make enough room in the one for you guys all to be in the one. I, I think I would have when I was talking to them about how I, I, I could kind of keep watch. I would say, you know we should all kind of just stick together so I can cover right. all our backs. Sounds good. Works for me. All right. Um, yes, it is about, uh, to your guys' best estimation, when you get together, you look at the maps, you estimate where you're at. Your best estimation is that you're about 50 miles from the exit to the swamp. So it's going to take you a couple of days to ride through the swamp and to get out of there. So what I'm going to have everybody do is um, for each day, 
you are going to make a check. Um, you have enough provisions for at least the next four days. Um, you have a pretty good idea of where you're going, but you will need to choose somebody uh, to navigate. And that's going to be a logic check. Um, to Rask, you've already decided that you're going to be the lookout. So that's an intuition check. Um, you don't need a healer and you don't need a morale check. So basically, you've already got one success because you've got provisions. So that's good for your first day. Now I need a who's going to be the guide? Who's going to try to guide us along the way here? That would actually usually be Tarask's position. That's his main thing is tracking and uh, guiding. That was his uh, class for two for like 80 years. All right. So um, if you're going to be the guide, then the lookout is somebody who kind of scouts ahead and watches for danger. Um, so I, that the lookout. Yeah. I I could perform that. Okay. And I would assume if it takes if you know after two days that would probably be at full health because. You know, two D six. Unless I just roll absolute junk, well, I would probably heal up. We don't know what's going to happen on the road. Yes, unfortunately, you are in rough terrain, so it takes you. Um, that's the reason it's going to take you so long to get out of the swamp to begin with, because you can't. That and the caravan itself just moves quite slowly, so. Finding, thank goodness you don't have to find food because it'd be it'd be really difficult to hunt here in the swamp. Um, finding your way through here isn't too difficult because you have a map. Um, however, being the lookout is going to be extraordinarily difficult. So I want to ask, make a logic test. Uh, uh, Tony's the lookout now. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no. I'm talking about the guide. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yep. Let's see if you guys get going off in the right direction. Okay. So that's um, logic and can I use tracking? Um, sure. Okay. Not really tracking anything, but you can add one d six from it. Okay. I just figured like like following a tra the trail, the path, and everything. Like yeah, that. yeah. And I'm I'm lowering the difficulty level for that. Gotcha. Uh, so that's six, four, four, fourteen. Fourteen, good. You needed a thirteen or higher. Uh, so that's one success. So you're at two. You guys are at two successes. Um, look out! I need you to uh, roll an intuition check for me. Okay. Um, and can I use either tracking or survival for this? Survival. Yep. And that is fourteen. Okay, that's one failure. Uh, so, yes, through this thick swamp, you are unable to scout ahead really properly. Um, however, uh, you guys are still going along great. Nothing appears to kind of get in your way. And that's your first day. So for this first day, you guys can roll another endurance dice pool. You've rested, um, and you have gone along your way quite nicely. And you are only 30 miles away from exiting the swamp. So once you've done that, let me know when we're ready for the next set of checks. That was probably the luckiest I roll ever. <laughs> I'm all set. So I'm actually in a position I can now um, assist at lookout. I have enough health I could assist. Okay, so... What? How do you intend on assisting in a, as the lookout? Um, where is where's Tarak's position? Um, Tarask is basically he's got the map and he's with the guys driving the horses uh, and he's pointing out landmarks and. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Our orc's name. Karak. Karak. Where, where is? Crack, what is your position in the caravan right now? Um, well, I figured I'd be scouting ahead, so I'm 
So um, you're on you're on foot. You're you're at the ground I'm on, level. I'm at yeah. I'm on foot. Um, I mean, he moves very quickly. I have, I don't think he'll have a problem keeping up with horses pulling um, wagons. Okay. Um, the the I guess what's the just for my own general knowledge because I was thinking of taking kind of a high point position to where I can see above and out uh, take a high kind of take a high ground position off the caravan this that way I could be able to see if there's something a little further out than um, be able to see uh, yeah no from his what position, I'll, what we'll do he is about seven feet tall I'll have you roll a D one D six, and that the result of that will be added to his scouting check. Yeah, that works. Um, however, this second day, are you all done uh, rolling your endurance dice pools and what have you? I am. Uh huh. Okay. Um, I just so happened to roll some freak weather on this second um, leg of the trip. And it is a massive heat wave. So you guys are in the swamp, and this heat wave hits. And it is muggy as all hell. And uh, you're sweating. It slows you down. Um, the horses are getting thirsty. You don't dare let them drink the water from the swamp because who knows what's in it. Uh, and they are consuming water faster than you guys can... Uh, maintain it and you're going to run out of water very soon um and yeah in this heat wave it's going to be you're looking for a 21 or higher on your checks you have rations so that's an automatic success so your fortune is now at two um guide to rask please make that check you're looking for a 16 or higher okay. because of the trail No way. Uh, seven. Okay, down to one fortune. I need a check from our lookouts. Good. Okay. Get to add six to that. Add six to that. So that is... 24. Ooh, okay, so despite the heat wave, um, you are able to... Watch out for debris and what have you that's on the trail. And, uh, yes, by the time you make it out of the swamp, you guys make it. Uh, however, you are out of water. You make it out of the swamp and you're out of, out of, out of water. And I'll show you the map as to where you guys are at. Just got to zoom her in here. All right, let me share this. Okay, so basically, um, you see these two trees right here in the center. You see the blighted veil. And then you see these two trees right here in the middle. Um, and then right underneath those is this open plains hex. That's where you guys are at. You just came out of the swamp there. Um, and you've successfully made it out of the swamp. And you're out of water. So is that us heading south? Is that south? Yes. Okay. Yep, that was the quickest way out. And it was it was on the path towards Nala. As you look further down the map, your path will take you down. Uh, and the charted route has you going around to the right of those hills here. Going around to the right of those hills and coming down this direction along the hills. And basically following the hills um, where there are natural sources of water. A lot of it is unknown uh, because... It hasn't been traveled in many years, given the current state of affairs. And basically, uh, you follow the mountains until you come down to uh, the wide open plains down here. And 
your entrance, you kind of follow, keep following the mountains over here until you reach this uh, Nala, the city of crowns. All right, uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, we came up with the um, trait for my origin. Uh, yes. You called it forager. Um, now, what, what you had said originally was once per day, if outside, you can spend one hour and successfully locate a natural food source. Yes, um, that food source may or, you know, it's, you know, it'll either be a, a berry bush or a herd of cattle. You know what I right, mean? So, okay, so it can't cross over to water. It's just food. Uh, yes. Okay, so then that that being the way that is, um, can I just, before we move forward, can I just do a, I don't know if it would be tracking, survival, or um, perception, but I'd like to just look around and see if I notice any signs of uh, medium to large animal life, something like a deer or, or anything like that. Yeah, it w there's no check required the, so oh, okay. because you have the exploit. No check required. You uh, are able to basically track down some some food. Uh, what you guys can do now that we're on oh. the hex map, uh, j I'm just going to point this out uh, right now, is that you'll basically be traveling along the hexes just the way we did. Um, and depending on how things go... So since you're out of water, um, the... <sighs> The hunting check that I have not made you make yet because of your provisions, you will need to make that a check and succeed on that to find water. Now, thankfully, that now that you're out of the swamp, um, finding these things is going to be much, much easier. Uh, and you can basically choose any hex that you guys stop on. You can choose to explore that hex and spend the entire day just exploring that whole hex to see if you find if you find anything of value or of interest um, in that 30 mile area um, so each hex represents 30 miles uh, at that scale it's roughly 600 miles to get down to Nala so it will take a few weeks to get down there if that's uh, your intended Goal. That was the goal of the caravan. Um, goals change. <laughs> so, uh, but here we are at this hex. Tarask would definitely be a proponent of hunkering down for the day and um, kind of bulking up on some equipment uh, resources if we can. So, yeah, he would suggest that to the party uh, and kind of just let them know that he. Uh, you know, he's pretty good outside, and if there's water around here, uh, he thinks he could find it. Korak uh, is, is fine with that. He's also very good outdoors and shouldn't have a problem finding water or other things. And I think for us, Lim. With what? I said, if you find water, I can swim. <laughs> I think Tarask would be would think it's really cool that Korak was going to be somebody that he could do outside stuff with kind of thing. Like, he doesn't usually trust people. Uh, and this is interesting. If I were to, if my character were to take the time to, since these guys apparently really know how to track and do that kind of stuff, if I were to take the time to observe and learn, would I gain that skill without having to spend XP? Um, so basically, um, you'd be talking years. Um, okay. Because I know in the book it says the only other way to gain exploits or skills and stuff like that is through the passage of time. And I think what that's mainly referring to is the passage of time like if if we were to decide okay guys this is a great stopping place let's fast forward time 1d6 years and you can all take a career rank and and that kind of thing other than that um i would say that it would be strictly experience um the the expenditure of experience points on those skills as a desired because that's kind of what those represent um so, for instance, it, it, 
I wouldn't... So I don't know if I've qualified this before. I think I have. But, like, if you wanted to buy a skill in sailing and you guys just got out of the swamp, I'd say, well, no, no, wait a minute. <laughs> that that makes absolutely no sense. I know in, like, a video game kind of way, yeah, you can spend your experience points any way you want, but um, in this game, we're going to do it in a way that makes sense because... I want things to feel real. So if you want to take sailing, you're going to have to go out to the sea. And then once you're out in the sea and you've got enough experience points to spend on that, that said, that says to me that your character was really interested in learning how to sail. And then, um, you know, by the, you spending that amount of experience points on learning how to sail, that kind of, it, it speaks about your character in a way that I is, um, you know, meaningful. Okay. Um, so just learning, so just learning from them is not going to be enough. To, in this time, in the time frame we've got, learning from them is not going to be enough for me to gain that skill. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, the passage of time isn't isn't going to be a function of a reliable way to gain any kind of skills. Um, but it, it's probably enough to justify taking a skill. Yes, exactly. If you wanted to pay for it. Gotcha. Yep. Okay, so then what I want for everybody to do then in this first hex, if you guys are going to hunker down in this hex and just um, explore, um, if you're looking for water, then I need a, an agility test from whoever's whoever all's looking for water. And it's not going to be difficult. It's going to be um, a 13 or higher. Um, would survival apply? Yes. To that as well? You, you said agility? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm guessing swimming wouldn't. Well, see, it's more for the hunting thing, so you're right. Agility is like... It, it makes sense for hunting when you're hunting animals, but it doesn't make sense for finding some water. So let's change that, not agility. It's I would, gonna, oh, sorry. I, I would recommend intuition. That's yeah, what I was going to argue. That's intuition. what I was going to go for, too, was intuition. Yeah. Which is the same for me either way. <laughs> Uh, so that is... Oh, what I got a... What did you say the target number was? 13. I got a 20. Okay. Okay, with 3d6, I could feasibly get that, so I'm willing to take a shot. Yeah, I mean, you all can strike out looking for water. Yeah, I got I got 16. Yep. Yeah, so you guys have no problem locating a water source. You get the, the horses watered. Um, it's a good water source. It's a nice little pond. Um... And uh, it seems to be stream fed, uh, or not stream fed, but kind of natural underground water uh, fed. Nice little yeah. spring. And I would use some time to just use my exploit to come back with like a handful of berries for everybody. Um, you know, like a day's worth of rations worth of stuff and just <clears throat> hand them out to the party. I don't think I can find enough for the other guys, so I don't know if we should, you know, I don't know if we need to go out and do an actual... Um, in this area, just outside of the swamp, you are able to find some... Uh, think of some weird fantasy equivalent of bananas, but not bananas. Uh, they're essentially like... Nice. Ba hey, um... Bononos. <laughs> Bononos. <laughs> They're not bananas. Yeah, They're yeah, yeah, but not bananas. But not bananas. Yes. <laughs> These are but not bananas. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like pig Latin. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I come back with uh, a couple of handfuls of but not bananas. Yeah, Feed that, the minions. Yep, yeah, that'll be enough to um, last everybody for a few days. Um, uh, or at least for as long as you spend time here at this hex. When you guys continue to travel... You'll have to find more food, and um, those situations could be different. So now what I want everybody to do is, now that you're out exploring the hex, is to make intuition checks. And I will tell you what you guys find. It's a group intuition check. And you guys will discover anything equal to or below anything that I have on a table here. Does survival or... Um, I would say that... Um, I think let's stick with just intuition for this. Okay. 
this so one. An Eleven for me. Ugh. I was one away from three sixes. So, oh, seventeen. Seventeen for Korak. Uh, uh, a what for? Fourteen. For me. 14. An eleven for Tarask. Okay, Tarask, you um, as you are kind of wandering off, exploring things, you find. Um, you come up to some jagged peaks, and you can see that low clouds drift in this valley below, and you can see that uh, this must be the Trollclaw Mountains that you can see down in there, um, and it looks like a almost like a different climate in there. Um, and you two, uh, Korak and Dane. You guys find uh, some overgrown ruins. It appears to be um, some kind of temple that has been uh, many, many centuries old. Very uh, run down. uh, Not not just run down as an understatement. It's complete rubble. And... Uh, you you think you might be able to to find an entrance to it because it appears that this was just the top of it, and you would assume that there might be some more things underground. Could um, I do a logic history or a logic religion to see if maybe mine I have? Knowledge yeah, you could do a logic is. religion. Uh, you pick up a piece of stone from it, and you can see the etchings, some archaic etchings, etchings on, on that. Um, you recognize these, and you recognize this um, as a church that existed many centuries ago and, and may still have pockets of followers today that followed uh, a religion that believed um, in a blue dragon god. And they would basically uh, come together and drink uh the representation of this dragon's blood and they would have these rituals essentially where they're they're cutting and spilling blood for each other and it, it's almost very vampiric in a way they're not literally sucking each other's blood but they they're very much worship uh in a very archaic way blood and they see it as a form of power the name the exact name of the church escapes you uh however you do know of its origins okay you're saying that is possible it would be possible to find the opening if we so desired uh yeah yeah you're able you you would be able to find probably an entrance that goes down into the ground you would assume that's that's the way a temple around here would have to be built did, Am did, I with did you that? Relay your find your information yes. on Korak. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Assume that you guys are all sharing this information. This is something that you guys are kind of all going out and finding. Like, hey guys, look, this looks like the the Trollclaw Mountains. And then you're like, hey, look, there's some ruins here. Look what I found. And then for um for Korak, what did you say? You rolled a fourteen. Uh, I rolled a seventeen. Seventeen. Um. Among the that that rubble uh, of the of the temple, you're able to find this tree, and it looks like a new tree. It looks like a young uh, tree that is completely out of place, and it just appears to be growing there with no other thing. No, it, it seems very out of place. A very young tree, just. Growing in the middle of this ruin. Is it um, about the you know seven feet long, or could I could I cut a staff out of it of, a, of about seven feet long? You certainly think you could. Okay. So, so I uh, I think I will start working on that. Looking for a, a tree screen about big. <laughs> 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 I actually, I did not put that in front of you for that reason, um, uh, but that was, it just happened to be very convenient. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's great. So just, um, you'll have no problems hacking this little guy down. You don't need to make any checks for that. 
Um, it'll take you about half an hour to get it down. And then um, after that, you'll need to spend some time crafting your spear. Right. Uh, but for now, yes, you guys have explored this this hex to pretty much its fullest. Thus, we want to explore the temple. I'll leave that up to the rest of the party. Well, Korak's all for it. I mean, they drink blood. <laughs> uh, Tarask thought he was coming out to do some trading with the caravan. And uh, he kind of abandoned and partied up with you guys. So, I mean, he's not going back home at this point. Um, I think he would almost be in, like, a treasure-seeking mode. Like, I, he wants to put... He needs some stuff because he needs to make some changes um, and go someplace else. So, he would... His only complaint, he would just kind of look over at our minions there and just kind of be like, I'm all for going for treasure. I, uh, I could line my pockets a bit right now, but... I don't want to do it babysitting your little little brothers over here. Yeah, that's understandable. I mean, we're out of the swamp. If you just uh, give them the map and point them south, I really don't know why they couldn't make their own way back. They look like big boys to me. Let me um, let me discuss it with them and see what they say. So, I want to go and discuss. I want to go talk with the same person that came and found us before um, to explain to them. Look, and I'm going. I'll use my leadership skill to help with this if I have to on my on my role if I have to. Um, they look. We're out of the danger zone at this point. If you stay along the hills. Stay in the plane, stay along the hillside. You should have no problem getting Denala. I think you guys are more than capable of achieving the, of achieving your goal. They will um, they'll basically kind of agree with you, except they'll express some concern that they have the horses and that they would feel terrible leaving you they, they they're not concerned about the other two they would feel terrible and like they were going against their charge if they left you in the middle of nowhere with no provisions and no horses and at that they refuse to go are are we nearby that's up to you uh, no, I would have let him handle this. Um, I look at them and say, I appreciate and greatly respect your position. However, I have a much greater calling that I must achieve. That I must seek out. You are welcome to provide you're welcome to provide me a day of provisions enough for the, and I'd ask that you leave enough, that you give enough for the three of us for a day. I believe that we can sustain ourselves fairly well. And I'm not worried about needing a horse. I am sure that we will be able to come upon horses or other forms of transport in the future. But again, I have a much greater calling that I need to seek out and yeah they the they look man they look among each other and they they pretty much say um we understand and that they are going to since at this point the caravan it's in total it's ruined and their original task of going to Nala selling their goods and coming back is completely ruined and all they're concerned about really is getting to safety. So what they're going to do is they're going to reroute to Gawick, um, a local uh, tribe that 
they are familiar with and leave you guys with one of the caravans and two horses or one of the the carts and two horses uh covered wagons i guess i should say and they'll take enough provisions that they think they need and uh basically there's not a whole lot left and so they take almost everything uh assuming that what you're saying they'll leave you enough food basically for a day and but in order for them to make their trip back to a town they have to take a good portion of it and that's completely understandable and i i bid them well um in the manner of my monastery um and thank them and thank them for um their for their and thank them for their bravery in live overwhelming odds in the swamp okay so they head off their way um do you guys make your way over to that temple there we go <laughs> we're off <laughs> okay um yeah you guys begin kind of uh rummaging through the ruins and picking up stone pieces and you do indeed find a small entrance into um and steps down into uh the ruins of this temple um as you make your way down in it's extraordinarily dark uh and those of you with dark sight can see up to a distance but those of you without it cannot and you'll need to find another light source I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, Tarask is fine as well. He would uh, offer to take point since Dane can't yeah, see. I'd, um, I would have to, I would have to at least fashion a torch of some kind uh, until my staff does something otherwise. <laughs> we don't want your staff to do something <laughs> otherwise. Yeah. I, I, I'm aware of that, but. <laughs> Okay, cool. So um, you guys will lead the way, and as you do, you can kind of see some sconces up against the wall. Um, you think you might be able to light them if they had fuel. Uh, okay. But I, I have oil. Oh, that's right. That's right. So, um, yeah, you could take down one of those sconces and, and attach it to... Um, you know, there's... You just came out of the swamp. It wouldn't. It would take you but fifteen minutes to go grab us a, a a stick from a tree, bring it back, attach a scones to it, um, soak some fabric maybe from the caravan in some oil, and then light it as you guys make your way. That torch will last. Why don't you roll um one d six for me, and then how many flasks of oil do you have? Or how much oil do you have? You just froze. I froze? Yeah. Okay, you're back. Okay. I have five flasks of oil. Okay, so you'll... Um, how big do you imagine those flasks of oil being? Um, they are... One pound a piece. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Essentially a pint. Okay, so you can choose basically every flask of oil that you use. Uh, of course, you'll need a, an appropriate amount of fabric to go with it, but basically we'll add one hour of light, plus I want you to roll 1d6 for additional hours. So 1d6 plus one, basically, per flask of oil. Actually, okay. If we had a lantern, it would last four hours, but, but we don't. So. Yeah, basically Please. this is how, how good's the fabric you grabbed okay. and how long's the right. oil gonna last. Are you rolling, um, Dane? As, as you will be carrying the torch? 
Um, yeah, but you're, since I think he's wanting you to roll it since you're the one crafting it. Yeah, yeah, you're putting it together. So I got five. Okay, great. So you, yeah, you've, you managed to rig this thing up really nice, and you think this this guy is going to last you five to six hours at least, um, on just that one flask of oil. Uh, you you kind of make good use of it over over time. You brought enough fabric with you, and you've got that one flask of oil that you're going to keep kind of using when necessary for the next five to six hours. So great, this casts out some light, and as that light goes out uh, and fills this temple, you can see that there you're in a rather large hallway that goes down, and this part of the temple seems to still be in complete ruins. And as you make your way down the hallway a little bit further, um, then uh, it comes to a T where you guys need to choose left or right. I would say, you know, you always go left, but that got me in trouble my last game, so. <laughs> as, long as, he's not, as long as he's not recreating Tomb of Horrors in this game, I'll be fine. Tarask would just, like, flip a coin and it would come down and just look at it and go, eh, left is fine with me. You guys are leading at this point, so I'm going to... Because... I don't want my I don't want the um, torch to interfere with dark vision. Yeah, so you guys uh, turn left. Um, you make your way down this hallway a little bit further. Everybody make perception checks. Korak has thirteen. I keep forgetting that's that's logic. Uh, intuition. Intuition. Oh, intuition. All right. 16 for Dane. Okay. 14 for Tarask. All right, you're all able to uh, see and easily go around uh, what is clearly a trap laid by some uh, creature. You're unsure of, of its origins. However, it looks very simple. It, it looks like a standard... Uh, if you step on this, you will fall into this hole that was already here, and I filled it with shards of glass. Um, and it, it doesn't look ancient, right? Like, this looks like a... Not as ancient as the temple. It does look rather old, um, and you're easily able to spot it without it. Like, there there was clearly, like, some hay and sticks put over it, but the hay has long since, like, rotted, and the sticks are just kind of... So you guys see that because of your torch you're able to see it quite easily and walk right past it no problem um as you do you make your way around and you turn you're forced to turn right um and you begin making your way down this hallway and you can hear the scuffle of feet Big feet or rats or we're not quite sure. Make a perception test. Eleven. You are pretty certain that it is something small. Could possibly be rats. Um, you don't hear any squeaking though, which is normally accompanied. Right. Um, Tarask would say, uh, let me, let me slip ahead a little bit. This place makes me uneasy. I don't want to get all caught at once. I can see in the dark. It won't give me much trouble. Okay. All right. As you go up ahead, you can see that the area out in front of you at the end of this hallway opens up into a larger room. Um, Tarask, make a perception test for me. I got two sixes, um, and it's a total of 18. Yes, you can very faintly hear. You stop and you hone your ears in, and you can very faintly hear a voice coming from the room ahead of you. And it appears to be saying, 
Hello? So I would kind of look back, I, I would think at least uh, Kurek can still see me. And uh, I would just kind of signal with my hands, like I would point to my ear, just like, I hear something. Okay. And then I would kind of start moving towards the wall or door where I heard that coming from. And just kind of, you know, basically be trying to point to and indicate to my party that that's where I'm hearing it. Yes, as you guys inch a little closer and you listen, you begin to hear, Hello? Is somebody there? I think Tarask would look at them and just be like, who could possibly be living in this dump? Uh, Tarask, are you uh, are you still up ahead of everybody? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought maybe they had. Oh, so if I'm the only one hearing this, then I would. I would oh just no, kind of... no, yeah, no. I was wondering. You you had told them that you kind of signaled to them, but then I was wondering if you went back ahead to see. Oh no! With this voice, I would probably just. I would wait till we figured out what's going on there. So do you signal for us to approach you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I would be kind of like like waving them ahead and pointing to this wall where I'm hearing this and just wait for them to come up. And then that's when I would think I would hear that. And I would just kind of look at them to see if they heard it and just be like, is somebody living here? Okay. Uh, who uh, has... How far does your dark sight go, um, Korak? Dark sight is, I believe, 30 feet. It's different for some species. Some species just have, like, straight dark sight and can see in night as clearly as they can see in day. Others are limited by a certain range. Yeah. Let me see. Okay, so yeah, oh, orcs yeah. can see in the dark as though it were daylight. Yes. Um, so yeah, elves, elves don't have that. I'm just reading through my my racial stuff. I don't actually see it. I kind of assume they did. It would appear not. Okay, then my mistake. I cannot see in the dark. Okay. So um, yeah, so I can see. I have some something that is limited to thirty feet, but it's not my sight. Yeah. So Korak, you're able to see. Down right. into this room, you're able to see uh, what would appear to be an old, decrepit man just kind of standing there in the middle of this room. Uh, and he kind of paces back and forth when he says something. Hello? And he's looking around as though he is looking for something or somebody. Okay. This is very odd. Um, there, I'll, I'll let them know that there is a, a old man out there. I don't know what an old man is doing in a ruined temple. And I don't think that he could really um, forage for food in <laughs> something like this. Tarask, having kind of been out in the wilderness, um, so basically I'm thinking, like, in most worlds, this would be pretty impossible for this old man to be out there, like Korak just said. So would, would, would it be within Tarask's character to say something like, there's no way a normal man could be out here living in these ruins. I say we kill whatever this thing is and keep moving. Or is that, would that be too much like saying, I want to kill this old dude? If that's Tarras' take on the situation, that's his take. Uh, I mean, I don't think he would kill an old guy. But if he thought it was impossible for an old guy to be out here on his own, he would assume that this is not what it seems. As he's putting the puzzle pieces together, he's... Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're pretty much uh, surmising that that an old man wouldn't necessarily be able to hunt, uh, 
there'd be no reason for him to call this place his home necessarily. Uh, he could maybe gather food from the local resources. Um, it just at this point, it's just kind of creepy. You're not a hundred percent sure what's going on. Okay. Can I see if he's like actually making footprints in the dust or, you know, cause I'm assuming there's dust all over this place. Um, yes, yes, there is. And, uh, he, yeah, he appears to be physically manipulating. He's standing next to a chair. He's got his hand on the chair. He's got a long walking stick in his other hand and he's looking around. And you guys are about, well, you tell me how far away you are from the entrance to this room. Cause the entrance is just a, a large opening. Um, I mean, I, I guess we're close enough to where I could see him, but, um, it's, he has no light at all. Yeah, he has no light. And your best guess is he can't see in the dark because if he could, he, and he was really legitimately looking for you, he'd spot you as, as easily as you've spotted him. Okay. Okay. Um, how about I go and have a talk with him? Okay. So you, you guys back me up. I'm, I'm asking them. Oh, okay. I'm not just going to go do it. <laughs> so now I think to ask frustration no, would build up. No, the no. Yeah. Go ahead, talk to him, kill him. I don't care. <laughs> when Tarask says that, you you see the man. He he obviously heard something. Hello, I can hear you. Are you there? Who are you? I will approach. Hello. Now fall behind. Okay, as you uh, make your way through the entrance of this uh, of this room, uh, he will turn to you uh, as he hears your footsteps coming towards him, and he says, uh, "When he turns and faces you, um, his face is clearly aged, um, and he's got these long, tattered." Very tattered rags. They might have, in some bygone age, been um, nice robes. Uh, however, in their current state, they're just, they're almost gone. And he is, his hands are so skinny and his, his arms are so skinny that he almost looks skeletal. He looks so um, weak. And he's got this long white hair um, that kind of comes down. Uh, to his chest and it kind of hovers in front of his eyes and he's kind of, he kind of looks up at you and he brings a shaking in his hand up to his uh, up to you and he says who are you I'd like to know who you are and what you are doing here who I am I don't know who I am Perhaps, How did you get here? perhaps you know. I've never seen you before. Hmm. Interesting. He'll kind of hobble around very slowly and sit down in the chair uh, very slowly. He says... I've been here a long time. Long time. And he just kind of starts rocking a little bit. How do you... How can you live here? He's, he raises his left hand and as if to gesture to the room and he says, Do you call this living? Not really. That's why I'm wondering why you're here. Um, 
he pauses for a moment as if he's contemplating that himself, why he's here. And he says, I don't remember. But if you're hungry, I know where the dining hall is. Here, let me show you. And he'll begin to stand up as he struggles to lean on his walking stick, and he starts shuffling towards another hallway down on the other side of the room, very slowly. Are you by yourself here? I'll follow behind him. I'm keeping a, a little space between. So. And Taras will follow behind them as well. He. He'll say, oh, by myself? No. I have friends. And he gestures, and when he says that, um, sets of eight eyes open up in the corners of, and on the ceiling of the room. Oh, and boy. these massive arachnids spool down from the ceiling and land on the ground uh, around you guys. And he says, these are my friends. Oh, great. Spiders. Why did it have to be spiders? And one lands next to him, and he puts his hand on it, and he says, Are you hungry? I don't know who they are. <laughs> and that's where we'll stop for tonight. Oh, man. Oh. Yeah, I was ready to light up a fist. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. You said eight sets of eyes, right? Yes. Okay. 